Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. Welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. The race for governor in 2020 is obviously heating up with more and more people jumping in, and that includes State Senator Ron Stallings. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good to be here. Thank you. Obviously a big announcement this week. Uh, why don't you take a moment and introduce yourself to some of your possible con constituents out there. <laughs> Well, again, I'm a physician. I came back home to practice medicine in 1985 after training down at Wake Forest and uh, been in my hometown ever since as a primary care doctor uh, in internal medicine and geriatrics. So I have wonderful older patients who have lots of problems. And so I've been tuned into their problems over the 34 years that I've been home. Uh, I've turned down other places to go, so I wanted to stay home and, and uh, be right there and help my community and of course my area coal country's been you know pretty hard hit lately uh, which uh, when you don't have a lot of hope uh, you end up uh, you know having uh, drug problems and different things like that so again I've been in the Senate since uh, 2006 before that I was on the Higher Education Policy Commission and University System Board of Trustees and Corridor G Regional Economic Development Authority Board of Directors so I certainly understand those three big circles of health, education, and the economy and how they interact. Let's talk a little bit about your expertise. You're a medical doctor. I've been in your office. You have a busy practice. Uh, I met you four years ago when I moved here right out of the box because of the opioid crisis. What is it about that issue that your expertise will lend itself well being governor as a medical professional? Well, certainly I've been involved in all the uh, opioid uh, legislation reforms. Uh, it's a delicate, delicate uh, balance because you want to cut down on the amount of opioids being used and so we have tightened up the initial prescriptions. Uh, but at the same time, people that have been taking these medicines for 20 years, uh, we know that it's very hard to, to stop that. And, and if we do, there's some bad outcomes. So, you know, and I still see uh, people, uh, patients, doctors who are not really treating pain adequately, particularly for cancer patients, and that just breaks my heart. Uh, but I also know the, uh, the interaction between the economy, the, the people have to be able to hire workforce that's drug free, and that's an issue. And then the problems with the uh, school system, these children have been impacted so much and have all these adverse childhood experiences because of the opioid epidemic. Uh, parents are not in the home, so, you know, grand families or kinship care is, uh, is going on now, and it really has to be uh, enhanced. So when we did the teacher listening tour, uh, I just learned so much. There's probably 30 to 40 percent of the children in West Virginia are really not ready to learn. And so that's just crucial. We just can't lose another generation, and, and that's what I'm afraid if we don't invest strategically in those first thousand days of someone's life uh, and enhance the, uh, the grandparents uh, and whoever's taking care of these children, then we're going to lose another generation. You, know, you brought up education. That's obviously a big issue facing the state. We just had a huge overhauling education reform. I know charter schools was a big part of that, but a lot of other things in there as well. Do you think that it did enough, and is there more that you wish would be done with education? Well, I think we have to see what we've done, see how it works, and see how it can be implemented. Uh, certainly, uh, and we need to have, we need to use all the tools in our toolbox, if you would. So these federally qualified health centers, these uh, uh, school-based health clinics, I think they have a major role to play. And it doesn't necessarily have to take from the education budget either. Uh, these uh, services can be provided uh, with cost-based reimbursement and billing through these federally qualified health centers or FQHC. So I, again, I, it's not so much what's going on between seven and three, but it's what's going on from three to seven in these. Uh, it's social determinants of education. It's social determinants of health. We know that 20% of, so, of health outcomes comes from the uh, healthcare system. So if we didn't have a pill, a doctor, a hospital or anything, 80% of health outcomes come from other things, like whether you have a good job, whether you have a good education, what your behaviors are. And I say the same thing for education. So I think in my case, I'm uniquely qualified to deal with those things uh, and, and strategically invest. Uh, it, it may not cost so much money down the road with corrections and all that stuff if we can 
in, uh, invest to the left or earlier in the system. All right. We should mention there are now two Democrats in the race. Stephen Smith is in. State Senator Ron Stallings in on the Democratic side in the campaign for governor. We may have some more candidates getting in, but we'll be talking more as the race uh, heats up. Thank you, Senator Stallings. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And we'll have more of Inside West Virginia politics after this break.